How do you define consciousness? I define it as I follow a very famous philosophical definition from Thomas Nagel, who says that for a conscious organism, there is something it is like to be that organism. And I take him to mean that it feels like something to be me. It feels like something to be you. But for other things like this table, it doesn't feel like anything to be a table. I mean, this is a very colloquial, informal definition. It sounds rather circular. Like for conscious things, there is experiencing happening in some form or another. I think another useful definition is what is lost under general anesthesia. No, it's, it's, which is a more profound state of unconsciousness than sleep. They align really. I mean, when you're under general anesthesia, you're basically turned into an object, something like a complex table, and then back again into a, into a person. But you know, intuitively, we all know what consciousness is. You know, it's, it's, the f it's the feeling of anything. It's what makes us more than objects. Um, and it just gets tricky when we try and really lock it down into a, a precise, logical or scientific definition. But we don't need to do that, I think, to make progress, so long as we are not talking past each other. You mentioned in a recent paper, I think, with Tim Bain, that a lot of the current theories of consciousness do talk past each other. Can you unpack what that means? Well, th yeah, so it can get problematic. So from that easy starting point, then there are many different ways that you can... Um, break down this overall definition. So, for instance, there's a still controversial definition between access consciousness and phenomenal consciousness. Now, phenomenal consciousness, which some philosophers think doesn't really uh, refer to anything or doesn't really exist in some sense, but if it does, it refers to the redness of red, you know, the, the paininess of pain, the immediate perceptual qualities that seem to characterize our lived experience of the world and the self. Whereas access consciousness is more about the, um, the cognitive access we have to our experiences, the ability to pay attention to them, to talk about them, the sharing of information between different um, processes in our brain. And some theories of consciousness focus on access consciousness. And some focus on phenomenal consciousness. And so if they are taken to be about the same thing, we can, we can get into trouble. And then you know, other, other theories will have other definitions of consciousness too. Some focus more on conscious content, you know, what we are conscious of when we're conscious. There's a whole huge tradition in psychology, like, which, which was very prominent even before people started talking more explicitly about consciousness that was about the difference between implicit and explicit perception or implicit and explicit learning. So that's all about what we experience when we're conscious. But then a whole bunch of other um, research is about conscious level, like the difference between anesthesia and wakefulness or different stages of sleep. So some theories focus more on one, others more on the other. And so again, they can end up talking past each other a little bit. Yeah, you mentioned that there's not only a different of, difference of emphasis, but um, some people will say that phenomenal consciousness, the what it's like, the subjective qualities of things, doesn't really exist. And I hear there's a view called illusionism, and sometimes illusionist philosophers, it will sound like they're denying the existence of consciousness altogether, but in other moments they'll say, well, no, we're not really doing that. But I've never been able to figure out, do you have a sense of, are these people, do they really not think consciousness exists, or how do we, what is illusionism? I think my experience is a bit similar to yours. There's, a, there's, a, there's an evasiveness to answering that question, which is, which is interesting and potentially um, revealing. I think there are two kinds of illusionism, which one is a strong illusionism, which is a very vociferous denial of the, um, of the premise of most other investigations into consciousness, which would be phenomenal realists. Like there is a there there when we're talking about the redness of red, you know, there's a there there to talk about. Um, strong illusionism would say, no, we're really just mistaken about that being an interesting question. You know, all that's going on are behaviors or dispositions to behave in a particular way. You know, it's very, in this sense, kind of continuous with behaviorism, which makes me always a little bit um, suspicious. Um, and then there's a weaker form of illusionism, which I find somewhat appealing. 
which is that no consciousness exists but it might not be what we think it is and of course the value of weak illusionism then depends on well what is the consciousness that we think it is that we're mistaken about and here i think there are useful things to say you know some people would imagine that um the self is a is an entity like a mini me inside my head um that is doing the perceiving and generating actions in response to these perceptions and i think that's a misconception of how we should think about the experience of a self similarly people might think about free will in a particular way as a kind of uncaused cause that makes things happen that otherwise wouldn't happen um, and unless we're explaining that we're not really explaining free will and i think that again is a mistake there are other ways to think about free will that don't have such problematic metaphysics so that's useful to think about conscious experience in ways which might not immediately emerge from our our pre-theoretical intuitions um so in a sense i can be allied with with that side of things i think it's potentially useful but i i don't like the term i must admit and this is just a very personal thing but these labels i think when they're given to people um it's often a way of being able to put them in a box and not actually think about what what they're really saying it's like ah that's that's illusionism i understand that so i can ignore it or you know i can buy into it um but i think the differences between different positions on consciousness are often much more subtle than these these labels lead us to think yeah yeah there's some heated rhetoric around i saw recently uh, richard brown was reacting to galen strawson talking about illusionism and he gets really upset and he says if you're an illusionist go watch somebody getting crucified and richard is like how do i even <laughs> digest that and and uh it's so so um yeah it it um it, it, the the labels can be unhelpful and consciousness seems like if there's anything that couldn't be an illusion it would be consciousness because just having an illusion is seems like a type of conscious experience yeah i think you could say that but i mean I, for me anyway i i prefer to start from a position where i'm going to assume that consciousness exists in a form that's that's reasonably aligned with people's general intuitions until i good reason to believe otherwise as as you say consciousness is in a sense the one thing we can be absolutely sure is happening everything else is up for grabs maybe there is fundamentally a mystery or maybe we're just psychologically pre disposed or or um or um condemned to perceiving there to be a mystery because we ourselves are conscious and you know, my preferred hypothesis generator for this pragmatic approach is the idea that the brain is a prediction machine. It seems as though, for most of us, that perception is the result of reading out sensory signals. This predictive processing view flips that on its head. It's not a readout of the sensory signals, but the content of the brain's top-down predictions. I use the term controlled hallucination in various talks and in my book because it captures this inversion. People in general seem to be a lot more het up about the possibility of AI being conscious rather than organoids being conscious. And I think this reflects more our psychological biases than any sort of evidence-based inference about what might actually be happening. I think it's far more likely that a future organoid might have some basic uh, consciousness than Claude 2 or GPT-5 or, or whatever the next phenomenon in machine learning might be. Subscribe to I'm Curious for more clips and watch the full interview on Patreon. Thanks for watching.